Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty positive news despite what's going on in the market. So first up, looks like there is a little bit of hoarding of Bitcoin going on as more and more institutions and people are taking Bitcoin into cold storage. On top of that, we're going to take a look at a little question that we have to answer as far as U.S. citizens for taxing, where we can actually say, no, we have not uh, acquired any virtual currencies. And then we're going to talk about sticking to your plan. And finally, there's a nice new survey out that says that pretty much people don't know what the heck they're buying. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, March 4th, 11 a.m. Houston, Texas time. And a uh, beautiful day here. I think it's going to be like 70 degrees. Can't beat this weather. Love it. So let's take a look at what we have as far as the market goes. So looks like we are uh, at Bitcoin again below 50,000. So we're going to take a look at an article where it talks about people just hoarding, but it doesn't really look that is what is going on. But I think I have a solution. Ethereum is down to 1590 again, way down uh, below its $2,000 mark. But uh, hey, it's gone up a, a whopping 0.94% in the last hour. So watch out. Binance coin uh, down 2% over 24 hours. Cardano down again 7%. And you have to remember, like I always talk about, uh, has anything fundamentally changed of any of these tokens? Uh, it is all the same thing, uh, just people selling and taking profit. So uh, not financial advice, but uh, this is a good time to uh, stock up on some little bit of a, a minor flash set. Polkadot uh, down uh, 3%, 8% for, hey, 8% for XRP. Watch out, good for them. Congratulations, XRP holders. You are in the green, uh, almost at 50 cents. Pretty good, especially with the SEC, you know, bearing down on them and beating them to, uh, to a pulp uh, with what's going on there. Uh, Uniswap up 13%. I'd like to hear about that, uh, which is amazing because the fees are like outrageous, but what are you going to do? And then Theta is moving into the top 15, and we, we covered this yesterday. Sony, um, they are doing a, a new validator or they're part of the validator nodes. And uh, now they have uh, Sony, they have connections with uh, YouTube, Gumi, all these great huge companies. And uh, I, again, I think Theta is gonna be a sleeping giant uh, for what it is. I also think Cardano's gonna be a sleeping giant, but uh, here we are. So that's really what's going on in the top 20. I'm sure there's some great things like VeChain up 10%. I think it was a new partnership that was announced. <laughs> Something there always is, but uh, well, uh, that's uh, what's going on. Kusama, 0.68. Anything great? That's pretty much all the big stuff. Let's just take a look at some quick sentiment analysis to see what could go up in the next hour or so. And uh, Chili's. Hey, that's crazy. Chili's. We were just talking about this. Uh, I had on uh, uh, Alex Fazel from Swissborg, and it was one of the tokens that they actually have on Swissborg. I think Swissborg is the next uh, Voyager. You can check that video out, link at the end. But it uh, looks like it's going to go up 12%. Interesting. Uh, over the next hour, three, maybe three and a half, uh, four percent. Uh, that's a ninety percent accuracy. So pretty good. Engine coin, another one I really should get into. I just haven't. Thirteen percent. Dent coin also making it. Uh, Wrap Terra. Man, one of the doing thing. And then Telos, always in the top uh, ten or so. Swiss board. The one we were talking about yesterday, four percent. And uh, you can take a look at trade the chain. There's a link in the description. You can check that out. But uh, let's go into today's top story, shall we? So this one was pretty good. Um, this is from my man CJ uh, over at Market Rebellion, and it's uh, he shared this from Glassnode. And I thought it was interesting because let me see if I can uh, close th do a close up. There we go. And if what we're looking at here is this is from 2018 all the way to the present day. As we, as we scale in a little bit, I mean, if we can take a look at here, all this uh, green is all the different uh, increasing liquid supply. Uh, that is just, you know, uh, the Bitcoin that is out and available for purchasing. Maybe this is from uh, the miners that it's, it's available. Then in the red is all of the decreasing liquid supply, I meaning if it's not liquid, someone is, uh, is stocking up on it. And that's exactly what's going on. And you can see over 2018, 2019, there were some big pieces here, but now as we go past Remember really about uh, March 2020. I remember that's when we had that black swan event where everything just fell down to the, the bottom. And we saw a pretty big uptick of people uh, hoarding it, hoarding Bitcoin. And then now we're taking a look as we go forward into June, July, October 2020. And now we're at the present day. 
we've got a lot of Bitcoin that is being illiquid. There is just being holed up. So the question then becomes, well, what the heck is going on? Because the price itself hasn't really done much and actually is down from 59,000. So what's happening? Well, if you take a look at the chart again, uh, before there was a lot of hoarding, a lot of uh, people putting it into cold storage, but you have to remember, well, first of all, people will always tell me the same thing. Rob, you understand uh, this market is different. Tons of institutions, solid hands, diamond hands. Sure. You have to understand I have the same problem, which is I always believe people are like me and they're not. So we're going to talk about that in the survey. You have to understand that uh, people are going to take profits. People are greedy. People are going to manipulate. And even for every one Michael Saylor diamond hands out there, there is a hundred weak handed, greedy manipulator, however you want to call them, uh, out there that are just in here for uh, just a quick buck. And they're going to move things around, and that is it. So, even though we have a pretty good uh, indication of that, there's a lot that is becoming illiquid. And I think as time goes on through education, people ac actually understand what cryptocurrency, digital assets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, uh, v chain everything with that that we talk about what it's actually going to do to change the world and change you know it's a new paradigm shift imagine what imagine remember what happened with when the internet came about i'm old so i remember those days uh before the internet there was this thing called a dewey decimal system and you had to go to like the library and look up information you actually had to write letters instead of email oh and you actually had to go shopping for stuff instead of having it delivered to your house it was crazy times crazy so I don't think people understand exactly what's going on and how important this is. So they're just kind of going through the motions. Again, I think people are going to lock things up. But for right now, people just don't get it. And you, you, my friend, are super early. I don't care what people say. You go on the street. You know about Bitcoin? Yeah, I know about Bitcoin. You know about Dogecoin? I've heard about Dogecoin. You know about Cardano? You know about Ethereum? Do you know about Chainlink? Do you know about fill in the blank? They have no idea. And it's the same thing if you were going to walk around the street in the early 90s and talk about email and HTTPS and PCP IP or TCP, TCP, TCP IP. People know I have no idea. So again, these are just the rough points, um, not financial advice, but I'm going to be holding for the long term. Uh, and uh, I think there's gonna, this year is going to be fireworks, just like we always talk about the four-year cycles, having all-time high dip reset. There was a halving not too long ago in 2020. 2021 is an all-time high. 2022 is a dip. 2023 is a reset. And off we go. Let me understand the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, I just did a live AMA with Sheehan Chandrakara. He's the uh, CPA and specializes in cryptocurrency. It was great. A lot of great questions we had. And uh, you know, I'll link that at the very end. It's, it's about 45 minutes, about 50, yeah, about 50 minutes. And it's a lot of great information uh, as far as like taxes, as far as Americans go. If you're outside of America, we talk a little bit about uh, things outside of that, but that's not really Xi'an's specialty, but it was still pretty good. So this was a article he wrote yesterday where he says, hey, and we talked about this in the AMA, there is a document that is going to be put out um, for U.S. taxpayers. And I'm just going to go over this really quick. In the 1040, it's going to ask you, it's going to be the very top. It's going to say, hey, have you received, sold, sent, exchanged, or otherwise acquired any financial interest in any virtual currency during 2020? And in this article, Xi'an says, if you purchase cryptocurrency in fiat, you, do not, you can still answer this no. And he explains exactly why in the AMA. And he talks about the reason why is because they updated the FAQ on the cryptocurrency uh, as of March 2nd, 2021. He caught it. And because of the way that they, as the IRS actually said it, you can say no, as long as you haven't sold that cryptocurrency, transferred it for another cryptocurrency, done some type of airdrop or things like that. If you just bought it in fiat and you bought Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, whatever else it is, and hasn't done anything, you've not acquired virtual currency. Crazy, right? These are the types of things that's uh, important when you have a CPA. So I will link this article in the description. I will link the AMA and you can figure it, uh, find all about that. But the way that he explained it, and I'll let him talk about it, this is a uh, no question if you have only bought and held. So interesting. Anyhow, that's what's going on with that. Now I want to talk to you real quick about sticking to your plan. And I didn't realize how important this was until we saw that big dip. Um, I have an exit strategy 
and it it goes along with all my different uh, altcoins, Ethereum included. So when Ethereum hit 2,000, I put it out. I said I'm selling Ethereum at 2,000. I said this is what's going to happen, and I did it uh, because I try to do as many things I say I'm going to do because it's important. Uh, you don't want to listen to some guy who's like, yeah, I do all this stuff. I, I have to do it. So when this came about, I was like, man, that's, you know, I didn't think it was going to go up this, this fast, but look what happened. As soon as it hit 2000, 2058 or 2100, I don't know what it came out, went into, it went right back down. And now we're, we're teetering at about 15 or 1600. So even when you think you're, you're making a mistake, sometimes it just, you know, timing just works out. Not like you're some Nostradamus, but that's my plan. And my plan is to cash out. And then this was a video we did about my seven pillars of, uh, of exit strategy. I'm going to keep 10% in cash, 25% are going to stable coins, 15% in land, 20% into investment properties, 10% in the Amazon FBA business, 15% into staking, and 5% into my IRA. And I wish I could do more because when I put it into iTrust, uh, I've, I've got a lot of Ethereum and Polkadot now that uh, once they allow staking in quarter two, then I don't get taxed on the staking rewards. And actually, Sheehan talked about that in the AMA, so check that out. But uh, this video, I'll try to link in the, uh, in, the, in the description as well. If not, you can always go over to danteachescrypto.com, this website that's always spinning, that it's 100% free. I made it free because I think people need to learn about this stuff. They don't need to pay me anything. I don't know where you're at. If you're in the United States, probably can afford a little bit. But what if you're in like uh, India or Sub-Saharan Africa? Uh, I don't want you to pay anything. So just go there. It's 100% free. And over there, that video is uh, is in uh, module five investing. So I talk about this because see this twenty percent right here. So what I did with that card, uh, that Cardano, that Ethereum that I sold, uh, we put it into our investment property. This is uh, from my Twitter feed, and uh, it's just a small little house here in Houston, uh, over by Jersey Village area, in the area. And um, you know, you have to understand that, of course. Cryptocurrency is going to go to the moon and everything's going to be great. Sure, sure, sure. Right. But what if it's not? What if something, there's a big stumbling block or something happens? So, like, I like to diversify and I want to just preface it with this. Uh, this is my strategy. This does not have to be, this isn't your strategy. So, this is the only thing that works for me. And you, uh, again, are totally different from me and you're able to do whatever you want to do. But for me, this is what makes sense uh, just buying investment properties, fixing them up. And putting them on Airbnb, and we've actually did uh, a video specifically on Airbnb and how to to cash out and and uh, get an Airbnb and actually find the right location by using a website called AirDNA and the things that you have to do to get things ready. And uh, on top of this, not only is is uh, are these investment properties you know they're pretty good as far as money making, but they're also uh, good for tax deductions. You know, as far as like the depreciation value of the home. Um, reducing uh, for the actual uh, interest that you have to pay, the taxes that you have to pay for the city, state, and local government. So uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with with property that you can't do with crypto, and uh, that's why I diversify. So just want to tell you that uh, if if you have a plan in place, just stick to your plan, whatever that is, and then make sure that it works for you. Anyhow, let me just think of the comments section, and then let's move on to our last piece, which this one's kind of depressing, but it is the truth. So. Uh, article states that more than one in three crypto investors know little to nothing about it. Survey finds again. That's why I made this website so people can understand what the heck is going on. But I didn't know it was this bad until I read this article. So uh, this was from using survey data collected from 750 investors. So granted, a very small sample uh, of where they got this information from. But again. I know people who are watching this are like, how, did, how could they not know? I know everything about it because people aren't you. You are probably very well versed about what's going on in crypto, but not everybody is like you. And that's just how it is. Uh, this was data collected from 750 seven investors between February 5th and February 12th, a stretch during which the price of one Bitcoin went from 37 to 47,000. Uh, Cardify, that's who ran the uh, survey finds that only 16.9% of investors who have bought crypto fully understand the value and the potential of cryptocurrency. Of course, it's the same thing with the internet. It's the same thing with online uh, retail. It's the same thing with every emerging um, you know, new technology that's out there. Uh, so just look for what do you think is going to be in the future and go for that. Uh, this is what it is. 
Anyhow, while 33.5% of buyers have either zero knowledge about this space or would call their level of understanding emerging. So what's going on? Why are they doing all this? The survey results suggest that many new investors have been spurred into action by a fear of missing out on gains. How crazy, FOMO. Anyhow, more than a third of survey respondents researched digital currencies for less than a month, which I'm surprised they did that before buying. And one in four cryptocurrency holders told Cardify that they were entering the space in the hopes of earning uh, short-term financial gains. And so my question is this, well, why did they do it? You know, not just because of FOMO, but I mean, what, what spurred them on? Well, it wasn't just Bitcoin's meteoric rise, high profile endorsements also played a role. Of the 750 investors surveyed, just under 180 say that they have a more favorable view of Dogecoin and are more likely to put their money into it thanks to Tesla CEO Elon Musk's many tweets to his 48 million followers. So look, that's the state of the cryptocurrency digital assets right now. If you are in crypto, first of all, you're early. And if you know what's going on, you're educated, which is even a rarity uh, of what we just saw in the survey. So this just goes back to the first um, data points that we took a look at for the glass node, that uh, graph. Yeah, there's people that are uh, hoarding it, but again, it's the, only the people, and that's really the smart money. The smart money of the people that really understand exactly what Bitcoin, what Cardano, what Ethereum, what Chainlink, what Polkadot, all those things actually do and can do. And they're holding on to it for dear life, like a Raul Powell, like a Michael Saylor, like a fill in the blank, whoever you want to say, like digital asset news, like Rob here. And you, because we know what it is and we want to hold on to it. So just be aware that these fluctuations in the market is because a lot of people are coming in. They have no idea what's going on, but it's really up to you to kind of educate them and me and that's why i started this channel and dan teaches crypto.com so uh just be aware that's what's going on uh, but nothing changes the uh, fundamentals are still the same and uh it's still i think this is gonna be one of those uh firework years all right so that's it for today's video so first of all i want to say thanks for stopping by i appreciate it if you like the video give it a thumbs up that always helps the channel tremendously and think about uh subscribing because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and then uh, I'll try to link uh, those two videos we talked about on the left and right of YouTube Do It's Magic. And that is it for today. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.